Hey, good morning. Shalom. Sister Kate here. Um, I am trying to only put up videos about this virus that I think are important. I know there's a million uh, videos out there now, and I don't want to overwhelm you all with things that are, you know, fr fluffy or frou-frou. I want to give you uh, something uh, important and something that hopefully will help you. So thank you for tuning in this morning. And um, what I'm going to recommend to you is a podcast by um, Peak Prosperity. I know nothing about that that channel or anything, but this the host did a interview with John M. Barry, and John M. Barry is the author of the book that I've told you I read about the 1918 Spanish flu. And y'all are probably thinking, well, she read one book, big deal. This book was a bestseller. Uh, it is the most comprehensive book on the flu from an outsider's perspective because he's not a medical doctor, but he covers the medical community before the flu struck all the way till after it was finished. And it's a huge wide view and it's, it's so much information, very important book. And John M. Barry, he did such a good job that he was um, brought into, you know, meetings on basically all the epidemic outbreaks that have been around since he wrote the book. So um, he talks about the H1N1, the bird flu, the West Nile virus. Um, he's, you know, there's worldwide flu experts who he's in contact every day. You'll hear it in the podcast. So I, I can't express to you how important this information is and you're getting it from a real source not just someone who thinks something and wants lots of views so um i put a link to this podcast in the community section of my youtube page uh you are welcome to go there and i it's about 43 minutes long um but they cover some very important topics the the host of Peak Prosperity has a background in microbiology and so when he asks questions he's asking uh, relevant um, knowledgeable questions and you'll hear John and Barry say wow you've done your research wow you know what you're talking about so um, yeah I think it's 43 minutes worth your time and I'll just tell you a few of the significant points that stood out to me that I have I don't know that I've covered in my videos yet um, but it made, you know, it, it's like a little bell going ding when they said it in my mind. So um, one of the things John Barry said was West Nile virus killed 300 people. And I know you guys know it was, you know, big in the press. Um, I think it, uh, there was warnings about horses being able to carry it and catch it. And people had to get their horses vaccinated and so on. It only killed 300 people total. But it got more research money than the flu gets on a, you know, like normal yearly basis. And he said the flu doesn't get near the research money. Um, and so therefore not as much research and into a vaccine that works well and so on than, than things like West Nile virus. Um, he addressed the mask issue because I, I think about, you know, I mean, all the pictures you see in China are people wearing these masks. And he said, um, masks do work. Uh, the statistics show that when people wear the masks, especially when they're sick, that the transmission rates and, and just the numbers go down. And he quoted an outbreak um, in Mexico where masks were handed out in a public places. And the I forget which number he was talking about, but it was 67%, and then a few days later, I think he said five days later, that number had gone down to 22%. So the the, uh, uh, the amount of people getting sick had been reduced. Um, so we stressed that people who are sick because it's an airborne aerosol-type virus. So it's coming out in people sneezing and they're coughing. Um, so it makes sense that if they have a mask on, it's going to keep a lot of those germs from going out. He said it's not as important for someone who's out in public who's not infected. And it's for the same reason. When the aerosol goes out in public, having the mask over your mouth is not as important as you having your hands clean and not touching your eyes. 
and he had some statistics for that too. Uh, people generally, if it's you know something like washing their hands, they'll they'll start out in day one and they'll wash their hands a lot, and then by about the fifth day, they they just don't want to do it, and so they're only doing it you know twice a day or whatever. Um, so it's really really important that if you're in public, you wash your hands often. And I would say anytime you went in public, you know. I don't know so much as going into a public toilet because now you've got the whole sinks and the, the doorknobs and everything um, that are contaminated and getting it on your shoe and, you know, someone coughing on you when you walk by. But definitely when you get to maybe your car, you have the Purell in there. Um, when you get home, you, you know, you definitely wash when you get home and you need the water to be warm. Um, I had another idea of just wearing gloves. You can get those little nitrile gloves, pretty cheap, and just wear them in public. And when you're done, strip them off, throw them away, wash your hands. So I thought that was really important. Um, another point was the World, Horth, the World Health Organization is holding off calling this a pandemic because they are waiting for another city to be as affected as Wuhan. And once there's another city that is as affected, then they will say, yeah, this is a pandemic. Um, I thought that was interesting. Something to keep your eye on. Um, he also said uh, that the incubation period makes this more likely to be widespread. Um, and then he brought up the point, which I have brought up before, that the influenza that Pastor and I got um, we, we were pretty much infected within the one to four day period and we infected somebody in one day. And he said that it's, when that happens, it, you just cannot catch it quick enough to quarantine people and so on. But when you've got an incubation period of five to seven days, it gives you enough time to, uh, identify some people and get them isolated, but it also the fact that it will not, you will not be symptomatic in the beginning stages of it, and you can be infecting people, is what's going to make it go widespread. What they talked about was the R naught factor, and it's you know gotten a lot of press. People just love to grab onto little buzzwords and then go blah, blah, blah about them. Um, it's simply the amount of people one person may infect when they have the virus. Um, and the 1918 flu, the R0 factor was 1.2. And given the numbers that have been put out by China uh, on the amount of people um, who have caught the virus and so on, the R0 factor is estimated um, between 2.5 and 3.5, which would be very high and another indicator that this could go to pandemic. So... Those were the things that I found very interesting about that podcast. Um, I'm not saying that either the host or the uh, expert, that's too much, a little bit that way, thanks, uh, were saying for definite that it was going to become a pandemic. They were very clear that they couldn't say that without more accurate information. Um, and then a couple of things that I thought have been significant today in the news was the cases that are being looked at. There's two students in Miami University, and I believe it was in Ohio, that have been quarantined for um, possibly having the virus and also a case in Lawrence, Kansas. And why I think that's another significant uh, thing to look at... Wow, I'm blinking my eyes a whole lot. It's because my eyes are dry, and uh, it's morning time. Um, anyway, the reason that these cases are significant is a college campus is a perfect petri dish for this thing to spread a bunch. And for reasons we already know, that if there was an infected person walking around in the populace of a university, having been on a university, there's always people walking around. So it would be very easy to, to spread it. Um, and people going in and out of buildings, doorknobs, etc., etc. So... Keep your eye on those kind of things because if a college has an outbreak, it, it usually spreads. Now, I know for a fact that the University of Kansas has a lot of money. It's, a, you know, the leading university in the state. And uh, having had a couple of kids go there, 
it's it, the endowments and, and the research and the buildings and just everything. It has a lot of money. It has its own medical clinic. It probably has more than one. The city itself has a couple of hospitals, so um, they will be more than able to respond to sick people there. Uh, I don't think that would be a problem. I think the problem would be whether it spreads or not. All right, thanks for uh, listening in this morning. I highly recommend that podcast. I highly recommend that book. Great information there. You guys, keep your eyes. Keep your eyes. Be watchful. All right, bless you. Shalom.